Welcome to School Idol Math Episode 5. I think this episode will be a bit more interesting than the stuff we've covered so far. Um, the earlier stuff was just kind of a primer. Um, most of you guys won't really benefit too much from like the UR comparisons, but I think this particular topic will be a bit more interesting for the majority of people. Because I still think that for the most part, a lot of people play this game, don't really care much about skilling up their cards, and I guess it's reasonable, because if you've been playing, like, near the beginning, or, like, you've been playing for a long time now, uh, it's only recently that skilling up your cards have been a bit, like, a, a significant kind of difference in terms of a tiering, in terms of a getting a higher song score. Um, I guess to start with a little bit of history, um, prior to, I think, version 4.2, somewhere around there. I'm not really sure about the specific number. Prior to that version, skilling up cards was kind of a joke. Not only because it was really hard to do, but also because uh, the benefit you got from it just wasn't worth it. You would much rather spend your blue tickets um, trying to get additional UR cards rather than trying to... Um, do the one blue ticket scout in order to get like a a mom in order to skill up the the UR cards um, because the benefits of actually skilling up those cards was rather linear linear in a bad way but once they've noticed like the four overpowered SR cards you know like the cheerleader Umi and Co taking over song ranking. Um, K-Lab had to do something, and what they did is they pretty much buffed the hell out of SSR and UR skill cards uh, to compensate, and now the meta has shifted to skilling up your UR cards rather than kind of make your teams as high of a base stat as possible, which used to be how you got on like top of the leaderboard previously. You just need a full team of idolized URs, and then you would get a full combo, and pretty much you were pretty high up there. And and for a long time, that's why I was, I guess, in the top 10 of the song rankings on the English version, because not only did I have a full team of idolized UR cards, at least for my smile and my pure team, um, but I also had the skills in order to get the full combo, and that was the important thing back then, was just how much score you could get by tapping notes. But now we've shifted the meta, and now the meta is pretty much how, how much benefit you can get from your skill activations, and tapping of the notes has become more or less inconsequential, at least in terms of like the higher echelons of tiering. But I guess that's enough of a history lesson. So we're going to split this kind of episode into three parts. There will only be one episode regarding the skill up topic, but I'm just going to lay down what we're going to talk about. So the first thing is, is a review of how much everything is worth in terms of skill up fodder. This is stuff you should already know about, um, but in case you don't know about this, it's a good refresher. Um, part two, we will be discussing a very interesting trick you can do with your duplicate cards in order to extract more skill experience. Now this kind of trick is I guess, rather gated for whales, more or less. Although a lot of people kind of take advantage of this for their SSR cards. But for the most part, um, the people who will get the most benefit from it will be the whales. So um, it's okay if you don't really take advantage of this kind of trick. It's just something nice to know about. And then finally, I guess I will show you in-game like the practical benefits of using that particular trick. So then that'll be the last part. So... Part one, let's talk about skilling up with your fodder. So this table here kind of just breaks down what you should already know. So you have these rare, super rare, and ultra rare skill up fodder cards, and they're worth 10, 100, and 1,000 experience respectively. So um, all these Yazawa siblings and the purple alpaca, um, you can get these from MedFest, Challenge Fest rewards, as well as opening the reward box. Those will probably be the most um, 
largest source um, of where you get them, uh, unless you actually do partake in the blue ticket scouting, which most people don't because they rather try to get uh, additional UR cards, which is reasonable. I don't blame you. Um, but these are still worth something, even if they're only worth like 10 experience each. Uh, ideally, you want to save like a whole bunch of them and then just use them up at once. Um, you don't want to like use them one at a time because that's ra rather inefficient um, because you might shift your focus uh, when you like get a better card. So say um, you have like this one card and then you fed it like nine Yazawa siblings for 90 skill experience and then oh look you pulled a better card um, that's a 90 skill experience you're never gonna get back. Uh, so it's a lot better to save them and then use them in bulk when you can actually like get benefit from it rather than getting halfway through a skill level and then just never having anything you know come from it so next is these 100s um so pretty much the support students and the teachers and this is the stuff that you will for the most part pay attention to the most not only because they're the middle ground but also um every month in the sticker shop, actually buy three of each teacher for a total of six teachers, I believe. Or is it two of each teachers? Yeah, yeah, it's two um, for a total of um, four each. So that's 400 skill experience um, that you can get every month as long as you have the end stickers to buy them every month. And end stickers aren't that hard to come by. So you really don't have any excuse not to buy these every month. It's a monthly investment that's really worth it. And if you don't buy them and you come to my stream, I will I will smack you because this is honestly the thing that is the most worth it. And I'll just keep saying it. You buy these teachers every month. And if you keep doing that, even if you have no like benefit from them right now, when you pull that card, when you pull that UR card, that sweet, sweet score up card, and you didn't buy the teachers for like the last three months, you're, you're gonna regret it. So please, please just buy these every month. It's only 60 end stickers in total per month. You play on the regular every month. It's very easy to get 60 end stickers. So just buy these. And then finally, you have the, the moms. And the moms are worth 1000 skill experience. So they're the cream of the crop. But for the most part, most people will never see, like, any of these ones. Um, or, like, any of these ones, practically. Like, the only reason anyone has, like, a mom to begin with is, like, during the login campaign, um, everyone got, like, a free Chica mom, so that's, like, a free 1,000 skill experience you can use on any card you want. Preferably a UR card to get that card to skill level 3. So, that's just a breakdown of all these, um... Uh, skill up fodders and where you can get them. The the moms are exclusive to blue ticket scouting, whereas um, everything else here, um, you can get them through the reward box. And if you're not sure, um, the reward box, uh, you actually get a higher chance of getting these cards if you use like the LP multipliers. So the greatest chance you can get to get like the, um, SR support cards is if you do like the four times LP on like a master song. So I know that's like a hundred LP per play, but this is how the whales farm it. Like you can either blow your load on a whole bunch of blue ticket scouting, or you do what I do and I play a whole bunch of like master four times LP songs and then get a whole bunch of these and then it's just happy life. Happy life, happy waifu. So Let's talk about, I guess, some of the mechanics behind skilling up, which is important to know about. Um, but again, I think you should know this by now, but just in case, I'll go over it. So this is pretty much the conversion factor. Um, since one mom is worth 1,000 skill experience, that's functionally equivalent to 10 of the SR ones and then 100 of the Yazawa siblings. So that's pretty much basic math exponentials. Um, I'm not your math teacher, so review that on your own time if you're not really sure how this works. Next is scaling up using, like, rare cards. So, or I guess any card in general. So, but rare cards will generally be the ones you use most since they're abundant. You can get them all the time. 
So this Honoka is equal to this Katori because they both have the skill. They both have the same skill name called Rhythmical Charm. So if you were to feed um, Honoka to Katori, it would get 10 experience. If you fed Katori to Honoka, it would get 10 experience. However, if you include this Umi into this equation, um, it's not the same because this Umi actually has Timer Charm which is a different skill name. So if you fed Umi to Katori or you fed Katori to Umi, you would not get any skill experience for this um, because they are different skill names. If you want to get skill experience without the use of um, using your support cards, um, you have to feed the same skill name to the same skill name. And you will get the same amount of experience as indicated by their rarity. So. 10 experience for rares, 100 for super rares, and 1,000 for URs. So next, um, talk about, like, the same thing as before. So, Honoka's Rhythmical Charm, this Smile Honoka, and this Cool Honoka also has Rhythmical Charm. So they are equivalent if you're feeding this Nozomi, for example, which is something you should have gotten if you've been logging in for, like, the past few months. Um, this Nozomi has Rhythmical Charm, so you can feed these rare cards to this Nozomi to skill her up, and then she would become a rather decent card to put on your team, actually. Now, it is important to note that for the support cards, you need to match the attribute for the card you're feeding to. So, in order to get benefit for your rare cards um, to feed to your UR promo cards, you'll, you'll have to feed the boy. Um, since the boy is the pure one, so if you fed like any of the girls, you would not get any experience for this Nozomi at all. But it doesn't matter what attribute these ones are because they have the same skill name. It just matters for their um, uh, the support cards. So next, um, SRs, same thing as before. So if you fed a duplicate SR to another duplicate SR, then it's worth 100 skill experience. Similarly, you can feed like the, the Mika for the smiles, or you can feed the teachers, and then they're worth 100 skill experience each. You probably don't want to use your teachers um, on a super rare card, they're just not worth it. Uh, so, it's important to note though, like if you idolize, for example, like you use one copy of the Rico to idolize, the second copy of the Rico, you don't get any skill experience, which is unfortunate. Um, but I can see why they did that, kind of like a balance thing. And uh, here, just a reminder that uh, you have to feed the same colored support card in order to get the experience. If you're fed like a Hideko, which is like the pure one, I think, uh, to like this Smile Rico, you would not get any skill experience for that. So again, do keep that in mind. However, the purple ones are kind of a wild card, so you can use those purple colored supports for any card you win. So finally, um, before we transition to the next topic at hand, um, the same thing really does apply for like SSRs and URs, but this is what we're going to talk about next, because there's a particular trick you can do um, if you do want to feed your duplicate cards um, to like uh, skill up your main card, to actually get more skill experience than you would theoretically get. So before that, let's look at the old experience chart. So. Prior to all the skill buffs, this is kind of um like the thresholds you really needed to skill up your cards. And you can see, like, let's look at the UR ones in particular, why it just wasn't worth it. So to get skill level 1 to skill level 2 in the old system, you needed 1,000 skill experience, which is equivalent to, like, one mom or, like, 10 of the SR level teachers, for example, and the benefit you actually got for skilling up those cards was a joke. You pretty much got, like, a few more percent activation, and then, like, for example, um, a skill level 1 that increases uh, your score by, like, 600 would become, like, 630. So, is, is that really any benefit? I mean, you're spending, like, a whole bunch of blue tickets to try to get a teacher, or, like, you're trying to get, like, a mom to feed to your UR card. And then, like, what are, you, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get, like, 30 extra points per activation? That, that's a joke! So, you can see why prior to, like, the massive buff, it, it just wasn't worth it. So, after the buff, not only did they make the skilling ups more worth it, they also made it a lot easier to level up those cards. So, looking again at the new experience chart, um, 
for the same price as before, 1,000 skill experience from a mom, you not only get like to skill level 2, but you also get to skill level 3, and you also get to like 100 additional experience to skill level like 4. So one mom became a jump from skill level 1 to skill level 3, and that was really good, not only because that was like double the benefit as before, but also because uh, of the buffs to the skills. So why don't we take a look, um, consult our trusty um, UR tier list again, and you can see like this kind of benefit. So at skill level 1, like this Ellie gets like 525. And then at skill level 3, it gets like 1065. So that's like double the benefit. So if essentially what you did... What you can do now is if you skill up a scorecard from skill level 1 to skill level 3, it becomes functionally equivalent to having two of that R card on your team. And that's kind of good because, say for example, you had a full team of R skill level 3 cards, then it would be like actually running 18 R cards on your team, though you only had 9 slots. So rather than looking at skill ups, as like an aside, what skill ups are now is that they put more members on like your team, even though you're physically constrained to nine members. Uh, in other words, the more you skill up a card, uh, the more like members you have, essentially. So if you're comparing like a full team of UR skill level ones to a full team of UR skill level threes, it's very likely that they could get double your final score. Because in a meta where the note tapping is negligible now, um, it's more important to invest rather in base stats into your skill experience so that you can get like all these activations, get really lucky, and then kind of like cheese the leaderboard. So uh, let's go back here. So now we can talk about the duplicate trick. So what the duplicate trick is, um, we, we talked about earlier, like the, we have this old experience chart and we have this new experience chart. However, what Kalaf forgot to change, or maybe they did this intentionally, I'm not really sure, is that if you feed duplicate SSRs and URs to each other, they take from the old experience table, which is something you see here, but um, the thresholds for actually skilling up your card is based on the new experience table. Now, if that's hard to wrap your head around, that's, that's fair. I'll explain this more friendly, family friendly in a little bit. But just know that like, um, due to this rather intentional or unintentional kind of negligence, um, it's a very interesting way you can get more skill experience than uh, you would be able to normally using duplicate cards. So I guess this is the, the take away tab to pay attention to. And I don't really take credit for this. Um, I do want to credit Reddit user Winchley. I made a post about this around four months ago uh, when this change was like implemented. So shout outs to Winchley um, who brought this topic up initially. Uh, but I just want to like bring this up again because it's kind of more relevant now more than ever. Uh, so uh, you can see here that uh, what you have like on this final column is this skill experience difference. Now, if you're not really sure how to read this, I'll I'll walk you through it. So a UR skill level one requires like no skill experience because it starts at level one. But if you fed a skill level 1 UR to another skill level 1 UR, uh, it would give that other one 1,000 skill experience. Again, this is based, again, on the table from before. Now, what's interesting here is that UR skill level 2 requires 300 skill experience in, like, in order to get from skill level 1 to skill level 2. But um, if you fed a skill level 2 UR to another like duplicate, it would actually give that card 2,000 skill experience. So the difference here is 1,700. And if you're not sure like 
why this is beneficial. Like, think about it this way. So, say you had three of these uh, Mikas, right? And you fed three of these Mikas to a UR card that you had, like, two of. So, like, say this pool rent. So, with three Mikas, you can get this pool rent to skill level two, which is nice. So, now you have a skill level two pool rent, and now you have a, I guess, your main one, which is already skill level one because you haven't done anything to it yet. So, if you were to feed this skill level two pool rent to the skill level one pool rent, it would actually give you 2,000 skill experience. Since this pool rent skill level two, it gives the one you're keeping uh, 2,000 skill experience. So, at the cost of Mika's, which is worth 300 skill experience, as well as like a duplicate, which is worth 1,000 skill experience, you essentially get 7,000, not 7,000, 700 more skill experience than you would normally if you were to just like, for example, feed this Rin, this other Rin at skill level 1. So then this Rin gives 1,000 skill experience, and then you would three, feed these three Mikas to this Rin, and then that would be like 1,300 in total. So here, I'll write it down if it's not, not really clear. So... Rin gives 1,000 skill experience, and then, like, if you feed it to this Rin, it would end up at skill level 2, SK2. However, if, like, you have three Mikas, uh, 1, 2, 3, and these three Mikas are worth 300 skill experience, so now you feed, like, these three Mikas to this Rin, and then this Rin will have skill level 2, and when you feed a skill level 2 um, UR card, it actually gives you 2,000 skill experience. So now, when you feed it to your, the RIN you're, you're keeping, um, that RIN will go from 0 to 2,000 skill experience. So then that'll actually jump to consult our table here. You can actually get that to skill level 4, which is pretty nice if I'm doing my head math correctly. Um, but what you're essentially doing is you're getting an additional 7,000 skill ex 700. I I'm going to keep making that mistake. So you're getting an additional 700 skill experience because one Rin at skill level 1 is worth 1,000. 1,000. And then you're adding, like, the, the three Mika. So then this would be, like, 1,300. But if you first use your Mikas on, like, the Rin, then it becomes skill level 2, and then that's worth 2,000 skill experience. So the difference here, like, you subtract that by 1,300, is, is 700. So if you don't want to bore yourself with the math, um, don't worry too much about it. All you really need to know is that um, use this trick in order to get a whole bunch more skill experience uh, than is like required to actually skill up your cards so for example if you wanted to get like a skill level four card it, it needs 2400 experience so you would need like 24 mikas kind of unreasonable right but using this um this trick that we just talked about you use one copy of this rin for example feed three mikas to it and then feed uh this Rin to another Rin, then second Rin will have 2,000 skill experience. So then you only need four more Mikas to get to like 2,400. So instead of using 24 Mikas, you can instead use one dupe Rin, and then that's, and then you feed it three Mikas, that's worth 2,000. So then you would only need four more Mikas to get it to like 2400. Quite a interesting and intriguing kind of mechanic, if I do say so myself. Um, but for the most part, I don't think your average player will consider feeding their duplicate URs um, to actually get this kind of benefit. But what a lot of people do, and I guess it's not a bad idea, it's just kind of if you want to keep the cards or not, is that, like, consulting our UR table again. So, 
if you fed a skill level 3 card to, like, another skill level 3 card, so you would use, like, two moms in total, right? Uh, you can actually get that card to skill level 5. And then when the card's at skill level 5, it's, it's more or less, like, triple the power it would be um, from skill level 1. So, you know, use your judgment. Like, if your team needs both of those UR cards, uh, I wouldn't beat it to each other, but if, like, the extra copy you had didn't fit your team for whatever reason, then it wouldn't be a bad idea to use this trick to just, you know, get more skill levels out of that particular card rather than just never using it or, like, having it be eye candy. So, let's wrap things off with me showing you guys how this actually works in-game. So, give me a minute, I'm gonna switch over to my... Um, in game overlay. I hope this is, um, okay. Okay, so now we're in game, and I'm going to show you pretty much what we've talked about earlier. So I'm going to take this, um, copy of, I have two copies of Pool Rin, and I'm going to feed one copy to the other copy to show you the difference in um, skill experience that you can get by doing this trick. So here we have like our Rin, and then I'm going to show you the other Rin, basically the Rin I'm going to keep. And I'm going to feed to this Rin our duplicate copy. And you can see here that it gets it to skill level 3, which is consistent with the, what we've talked about before. A UR card at skill level 1 grants another UR of the same skill name 1,000 skill experience. So, what if instead we were to take our duplicate Rin and we were to feed it three Mikas and by doing so, get it to skill level 2? So that's what we're going to do right now. Excuse the black screen here, but for reasons that I cannot say, I'm not allowed to show you how many skill members I actually have. Um, but here you can see I'm going to feed three Mikas to this Rin, and then it's going to get to skill level 2. Mm -hmm. So you can see the skill up. So now we're going to go back to our uh, in initial um, the Rin we're going to keep. Uh, as you can see here, like, we gained a few percentage to our activation and one additional second to the perfect lock. Um, just to compare that with our skill level 1 uh, Rin. And so that's, like, a pretty good benefit. Um, but what we're going to do now instead is we're going to feed the skill level 2 this um, skill level 1 Rin. And what this will do is it'll get us to skill level 3, as it did before. But it also granted us 700 additional experience. Or, or should I say, uh, 1,000 additional experience. So, um, not only did we get to skill level 3, um, we got to 1,100 out of 1,500 um, towards skill level 4. So now, all I would really need is 4 more Mikas afterward to get this Rin to skill level 4. Whereas, if we did not use this trick, we would need um, that one copy of Rin for 1,000 skill experience. And then we would need 14 more copies of Mika for um, the skill level. The thing you want to take home is like these bold values, and these bold values are basically the skill level in which you extract the most benefit for that particular skill up. So, um, for the SSRs, the most you're gonna get out of it is an additional 600 experience. Um, if you got the SSR to skill level 3 first before feeding it, for URs, um, the most you can benefit is for skill level 4. So that would get you an additional 3,600 skill experience um, rather than just feeding like your dupes initially. Uh, there is a point of, um, I guess, diminishing returns. As you can see, like everything past the bold value will just be decreasing. So skill level 4 uh, will be 400, skill level 5 will be 100, and then skill level 6 for SSRs um, and onward is just negative. Similarly to the URs, um, it goes down after skill level 5. 4 and 5 are worth the same. 
Um, but then everything after that is less. And then that 7 and 8 is just negative. So you never really want to, like, do that for, like, these high skill levels. But these earlier skill levels where it's actually practical to just feed a few, um, a few of your support cards to get those additional numbers, that's what you want to benefit from the most. So that'll pretty much do it for this episode of um, Skeletal Math. If you have any questions regarding uh, this... Uh, skill up mechanic or just skill ups in general um do feel free to ask in the comments come come to our team building um channel in the discord if you want to have more in-depth discussion team suggestions and whatnot next topic we will cover in the near future will probably be school idol skills because i know a lot of you um still ask a whole bunch of like uh, when should i use this skill when is like aura better than uh, cross etc etc so we will spend like a video or two on that and yeah i will see you guys next time when we do talk about it